Can a cat be dead and alive at the same time? In 1935, quantum physicist Erwin Schrödinger came up with a thought experiment to show that, according to quantum mechanics, a cat can be in the superposition of being alive and dead. But in everyday life, we never see cats being alive and dead at the same time. Let's resolve this paradox. Welcome back to the Quantum Paradoxes video series. I'm Maria Villaris, I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford and an intern with the Kiskit community team. In this series, I show you how to explain counterintuitive quantum thought experiments by coding them on a quantum computer. In this video, I'll explain the Schrödinger's cat paradox and turn it into a quantum circuit to explain the possible resolutions. In the original paradox, we imagined the cat in a box with a vial of poison, a small hammer, and a radioactive atom. If the atom decays, then it will trigger the hammer to smash open the vial of poison, and the cat will die. If the atom does not decay, then the hammer will not smash open the vial of poison, and the cat will stay alive. Now it gets interesting if the atom is in a quantum superposition of decaying and not decaying. Then, quantum mechanics says that the atom and cat become quantum entangled, so they enter a joint superposition of two states. In one state, the atom has decayed and the cat is dead. In the other, the atom has not decayed and the cat is alive. So inside the box, we now have a cat that is in a superposition of being alive and dead at the same time. What happens if an observer looks inside the box? The collapse postulate of quantum mechanics roughly says that when you observe a system in quantum superposition, its state collapses. So if anyone opens the box containing Schrodinger's cat, their observation will cause a collapse, so the cat is either alive or dead. However, the collapse postulate doesn't say what counts as an observer. If the cat counts as an observer, then the cat will collapse the atom state inside the box and will never be alive and dead simultaneously. If the hammer counts as an observer, then the hammer will cause the atom state to collapse and never enter a superposition. The idea that observation causes collapse is often referred to as the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. But it's too vague to help us conclude whether the cat really enters a superposition of being alive and dead at the same time. There are some work in progress modifications to quantum theory that explicitly model collapse, such as objective collapse theories. In those theories, whether or not hammers and cats can be in superpositions depends on the precise conditions that they have for collapse. An alternative approach is to take the existing theory of quantum mechanics at face value as a universal theory and apply it to observers and our environment. Then observing a system in quantum superposition of two states actually corresponds to the measurement apparatus or observer becoming quantum entangled with the system. The observer and system both enter a big joint superposition of states. Crucially, this measurement process is reversible, and the observer and system could in theory be unentangled and return to their original states. One version of quantum theory which uses this no-collapse approach is Everettian quantum mechanics. Applying it to the Schrödinger's cat thought experiment, it leads to two emergent branches of the universe. One where the observer sees an alive cat, and one where an observer sees a dead cat. For this reason, it's commonly known as the many worlds interpretation. I'm going to present each part of the Schrödinger's cat thought experiment using quantum gates and qubits so we can understand what's going on. If you're not familiar with quantum gates and quantum circuits, I recommend taking a look at the Basics of Quantum Information course on the IBM Quantum Learning Platform before continuing with this video. There's a link in the description below. Now let's start coding with Qiskit. First, I'll use a qubit to represent our radioactive atom. 
our atom needs to be in a superposition of two states, decayed and not decayed. So let's put our qubit into an equal superposition of 0 and 1 by putting it into the plus state. We can do this by starting our qubit in the zero state and then applying a Hadamard gate. So this will put it in the plus state and then when we run the circuit we see that half the time we measure the outcome to be zero and half the time we measure the outcome to be one. Now let's introduce a second qubit to represent the cat inside the box. To represent the cat interacting with the radioactive atom, we'll use a control not gate. If the atom is zero, so it's undecayed, then the cat qubit will stay as zero, meaning it stays alive. If the atom is one, meaning it's decayed, then the cat qubit will be flipped to one, meaning it becomes dead. So overall, we're applying the control not to put the atom and cat qubit into this joint entangled bell state. Here we're imagining that the cat's observation of the atom doesn't cause an irreversible collapse. Instead, the cat is a quantum system that becomes entangled with the atom and enters a quantum superposition of being alive with an undecayed atom and dead with a decayed atom. Now, when we add measurements and run our circuit, you can see that the cat state is completely entangled with the atom state because we either get an outcome of 0, 0 or 1, 1. Now, what happens if we look inside the box? We need to model our own observation of the cat. The irreversible collapse scientists will model our observation in a different way to the no collapse scientists. The collapse version of us looking inside the box is running the circuit with a measurement for a single shot. So here I've added measurements to the circuit and then just run it for one shot. And in this case, we got the zero zero outcome, meaning that the cat collapsed to the alive state. So the cat is alive when we looked at it. But in the no collapse version, we can model ourselves as a quantum system too. So when we look inside the box, we become quantum entangled with the cat and enter the quantum superposition. So we'll introduce a third qubit to represent the observer's memory and add a control not gate between the cat and observer qubits. Then the cat's status as alive gets copied into our memory. If it's zero, then we record zero. And if it's one, so it's dead, then we record that it's dead in our memory. Overall, the three qubits, the atom, cat and observer's memory, are now in a big entangled superposition. If the observer really is entering an entangled superposition, then why did they and the rest of the world around them only see one outcome? To understand this, I like to imagine the environment as a collection of dominoes. As soon as we knock over one domino, it triggers a chain reaction that spreads across the entire set of dominoes until they have all been knocked over. Now, imagine that each domino represents a qubit, so the environment is a collection of qubits. When the first qubit gets the information about whether the cat is dead or alive, it then spreads to the next qubit and the next qubit. One by one, all the environment qubits join the giant entangled superposition, entering the overall entangled state. In the quantum circuit, we can represent this chain of passing on information about the cat from one qubit to another by a series of control knot gates between the environment qubits. Then in each branch of the superposition, the qubits are either all zero or all one. In the Everettian theory of quantum mechanics, this means that the observer is either in a branch of the universe where they and everyone around them sees the cat being dead, or a branch where they and everyone around them sees the cat being alive. So even though the overall quantum state of the atom, cat, observer and environment is in a coherent superposition, the observer will only see a single outcome of their measurement, and the rest of the world around them will agree on the single outcome of that measurement. So when we run the circuit, we can see the outcomes are either 
all zeros or all ones. Now, it's much easier to knock down all the dominoes than to stand them all back up. In a similar way, it's much easier for the information of a quantum system to be spread out across the environment than it is to erase it from the environment. This is why the cat becomes fixed into either the dead state or a live state. Without quantum control over the environment, not even the most powerful technology can unentangle the cat from its environment. We call this process decoherence because the atom, cat and observer lose their quantum coherence once they interact with the environment. In general, any environment over which we have no quantum control, measuring a system projects it into a single state, losing its quantum coherence. Fighting the effects of decoherence is one of the key challenges of quantum computing. To preserve the coherent properties of quantum states that we use for processing quantum information, we want to keep them as isolated from the environment as possible. Once they interact with the environment, qubits decohere and become fixed into these two separate branches, where they're either zero or one. Let's modify the quantum circuit for the case where measurement instead causes irreversible collapse. Then somewhere along the chain of C knots, we must add an irreversible measurement. It might be when the cat measures the atom, or when the observer measures the cat, or somewhere else on the chain, depending on the explanation you use for the mechanism behind collapse. So in this circuit, I've added barriers to show the different points on the circuit where the irreversible collapse could potentially take place. Then when we run it, we can see that the outcomes are again, either all zeros or all ones, wherever we put this measurement in. When we don't have quantum control over the environment, the state of the atom, cat and observer subsystem is mathematically the same as if it underwent an irreversible collapse. If you're familiar with density matrices, you can prove this yourself by showing that the density matrix of the atom, cat and observer qubits in the no collapse and collapse cases is exactly the same, which is this density matrix here. In quantum computing, this equivalence is related to the principle of deferred measurement. According to this principle, moving measurements from before the controls to after the C knots makes no difference to the distribution of measurement outcomes. You can see from our collapse and no collapse quantum circuits that they are equivalent up to the shifting of measurements through the C0 gates. This equivalence between quantum states after decoherence and quantum states after irreversible collapse leads to a very common misconception, which is to label collapse and no collapse as mere philosophical interpretations of quantum theory without any observable differences. In the next video, I'm going to explain an important thought experiment which demonstrates a contradiction in the naive application of the idea that observation causes collapse. It also turned out to be a step towards the discovery of quantum computing. It's called Wigner's Friend. I hope you've enjoyed resolving the paradox of Schrodinger's cat using quantum circuits, where we've seen that large superpositions are actually self-consistent and have the same effect on Schrodinger's cat as an irreversible measurement. A Jupyter notebook with all the code I used in this video is in the video description, along with a blog post if you want to find out more about the paradox. See you next time for more paradox busting.